Hey there YouTube. So in this video I wanted to talk about what happens if you change US tax residency, right? What kind of forms you have to update with your US banks, your US brokers. So this is really directed at somebody that was living in the United States temporarily on a work visa, let's say an H-1B visa. So they're not a US citizen, they're not a US green card holder but they became a U.S. tax resident because they were living in the United States on a full-time basis. So what happens when you decide that you no longer want to work in the U.S. and you leave the country? What do you need to do as far as updating withholding certificates and why it's important? So just to cover some of the basics, the top uh, bullet point there, if you're a non-U.S. citizen and you're temporarily living in the U.S., you're generally a U.S. tax resident because you meet what's called the substantial presence test, right? So the substantial presence test, for the most part, works on, you know, if you live in the United States for 183 days or more during the year, you meet this test. The computation isn't exactly that simple, but for the most part, that's kind of how it works. If you're living in the U.S. on a full-time basis, you can become a U.S. tax resident even though you're not a U.S. citizen and even though you don't have a U.S. green card. So. A lot of people that are in the U.S. on a temporary work visa will fall into this bucket. So now when you break U.S. tax residency, so you leave the country, you forfeit um, your uh, work permit, you might still have accounts in the U.S., uh, bank accounts, brokerage accounts, you might have a retirement plan. Um, so what do you need to do with those third parties um, as far as updating your tax status, right? So. If you're leaving and you're no longer a U.S. tax resident, so you no longer meet that U.S. substantial presence test, you need to update your withholding certificate with that brokerage company, let's say. Now, when you were living there, you would have provided a Form W-9, right? A Form W-9 is used for U.S. tax residents, right? So you fill out your name, your I-10, your address, you sign it, and that certifies to the brokerage company that you are a U.S. tax resident for federal tax purposes. If you're no longer a U.S. tax resident, you're now a non-U.S. person. And the reason why you want to make sure that these materials are updated is because that completely changes your tax profile, right? <clears throat> so, um, so this next bullet point down here, a couple. Uh, under federal tax rules, a taxpayer is required to provide updated withholding certificates within 30 days of a change in circumstance. So if you read the fine print of your Form W-9 or your Form W-8-BEN, it says in there very clearly that you're signing this on a penalty of perjury, that everything is accurate, and in the event that something changes, right? So if a material part of that form changes, you need to provide an updated certificate. So that's the first issue. If you provide a broker a W-9 and you're no longer a U.S. tax resident, within 30 days you need to provide them a Form W-8-BEN, right? Because now you're a foreign person for federal tax purposes. So that's the first piece. You want to make sure you have updated documentation because you don't want to be held liable for effectively lying on a return. I mean, you're not lying at the time you signed it, but you're lying in the, in the sense that you knew there was a change and you refused to reach out to your bank in the required amount of time to provide them an updated certificate. So absolutely provide them an updated certificate as soon as your tax residency changes. The second big piece here is now that you're a non-resident, it completely changes your tax profile. As a U.S. taxpayer, you're required to report all of your income from whatever source derived, pay tax on it. That's how it works. Um, and all that is reported to you annually on a Form 1099 and the IRS gets a copy. If you're a foreign person, you don't get 1099 reporting and there's potentially withholding that occurs on the U.S. source income. So non-residents are subject to a 30% withholding tax on U.S. source dividends and on some types of interest. A lot of U.S. source interest is exempt under the portfolio interest exemption, but for the most part, the big withholding hit is going to be on U.S. source dividend income. So if you have a brokerage account and you're invested in U.S. securities, Apple, Google, Tesla, whatever the stock might be, and you receive dividend income, the broker now has to withhold 30% in tax on the dividends and pay that to the IRS. This is in contrast to when you're a U.S. person, there was no withholding because the companies know that you're going to be reporting the income on your tax return 
and paying tax on it every year. So that's the big, that's the big second change is the withholding tax that applies to non-residents starts to kick in as soon as you lose that U.S. tax residency. <clears throat> the other big one, and this is to your benefit, is capital gains tax. So capital gains are taxed for U.S. persons, long-term, short-term, depending on the holding period. But non-residents are not subject to capital gains taxes on the sale of U.S. securities, right? So that 30% withholding tax doesn't apply if you bought and sold Apple stock for a gain. Capital gains are completely exempt for non-residents. And that's because the sale of it is treated as personal property, and personal property is sourced to where you are physically located, where your residency is. So if you're a non-resident, capital gains don't apply to you. So that's also huge, right? You want to be, you want to make it very clear to the broker and the IRS that you are not a U.S. taxpayer. So your capital gains will not be subject to U.S. taxes. And then the last one I had down there at the bottom is just the reporting generally. So U.S. taxpayers receive Form 1099. Brokers will send out a consolidated Form 1099. So it includes the dividends and interest, capital gains reporting. Maybe you might have some royalty income there. All of that gets reported to the IRS via Form 1099. For non-residents, they don't get 1099s. They might get a Form 1042-S, which is used to report U.S. source income paid to a foreign person that's subject to withholding. So the Form 1042-S is generally just gonna have the dividends. So if you get a Form 1042-S from your broker, it'll have the dividend income that was paid from U.S. sources, it'll have the withholding tax at the appropriate rate, uh, and then that's it. You don't have to file any tax returns after that or do anything. So uh, the takeaway, very important to monitor your tax residency, particularly if you're not a U.S. citizen or green card holder and you're kind of going back and forth between the U.S. or you're in the U.S. for a number of years and you're leaving. Make sure that if you're retaining any of these accounts, update the information with that third party. Talk, talk to your broker, talk to your bank, um, whatever the custodian is, you might have a retirement account with somebody, make sure they know that you are no longer a U.S. tax resident. That's very, very important. So yeah, that covers all of it um, that I wanted to address on this issue. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below on the video. Happy to answer those. And of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I continue to put out a lot of uh, information around these, these issues, particularly those that affect non-resident taxpayers. So, um, you know, I hope you subscribe, you like the content, you find it valuable, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.